Hi, this is Jack Stanley, and I wanted to talk about imagination. Now, lots of things I talk about have a lot to do with imagination. But you know, the older I get, the more convinced I am that we are losing a lot of our imagination. Because it is, or our lives are so influenced by electronics. There was a big cry many, many years ago when radio came out that it was going to influence how we thought and how we listened to music and stuff like that. And then everyone realized that radio was pretty good and actually it was a magnificent tool for imagination because on radio you could create the sound, but the picture was in your mind. And then came television, and that was a great reversal in many respects when it came to imagination. Because now, all of a sudden, with television, your mind didn't have to work on imagination or to think or to create illusions. It basically saw everything. And television was, in the words of one television performer, a man-eating monster. And now, here we are in the 21st century, well into the 21st century. We have the internet, we have all different types of devices to entertain us. But how often do we use imagination? We all do to a degree, but I don't think imagination is given the amplitude it should be allowed. And that is, in schools, we should encourage it. There should be at least one day every school year dedicated completely to imagination. In fact, there should be, you know, you have science fairs and math fairs and history fairs. At least they used to. I don't know if they still do in many schools. But wouldn't it be fantastic to have an imagination fair? You know, to let kids think beyond the confines of, of life, society, rules. Uh, and, and, and imagine things that can be. Because it's an important thing that these children will inherit this world. And we want them to be imaginative. You know, we have to think of the great inventors, the great innovators, the great creators that will come out of the lot that's just growing up now. And so I truly believe as teachers and educators, parents, friends, grandparents, etc., encourage imagination. Maybe we could actually have technology-free days. I know that would go nowhere. You know, some people need to be on Twitter all the time. Lots of people need to be on Facebook and this and that and all kinds of social media. But wouldn't it be wonderful if we could actually have imagination fairs? Wouldn't it be fun if we could have creative and innovative fairs? Wouldn't it be fun if we could just let kids forget the world for a day and let them soar in directions never thought before? Well, I know this is all wishful thinking. But you know something? I have always been a devotee of, of imagination. And I think we all should be. Because imagination is what makes life. Everything that surrounds us is the product of imagination. Sometimes we forget that very fact. But I think it's an important thing for us all to stop every now and then. Hop off this mass treadmill of life and just relax. Let our imagination soar and find ourselves flying in amongst the Milky Way. You know, John Adams, our second president, used to say that. He used to say that his dreams take him past the Milky Way. And he had great ideas and thoughts. And, 
He used to talk to uh, was Benjamin Rush, his friend, and they would sit there and talk about their dreams to each other. That's wonderful. We should all do that. We should all share our dreams, our ideas, our fantasies, and show the world that there still is wonderful dreams, wonderful thoughts, and wonderful imagination. I think that's a great thing to give to our kids, to inspire them, to let them know it's okay to daydream now and then, because some of the greatest daydreamers brought light to the world. Some of the greatest daydreamers taught us how to communicate with each other. And some of the greatest daydreamers would become rulers, presidents, kings, and political leaders. Something to think of. Something to imagine. Thank you.